What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the BCA podcast. Today, I got a real special guest here, a brother by the name of Stephen Golar. Uh, he's a, a certified Vertimax trainer, uh, overall personal trainer, works with many different athletes from high school, professional, whatever you name it, he's training it. Uh, he's been doing it for over 30 years. Um, he's been ranked one of the top uh, instructors for lessons.com. Um, and uh, today, he, he's going to tell a story about how he got started, what he's been doing. And, and hopefully we get some good insight of that for you guys to be inspired and, and, and learn some more information. So uh, uh, welcome to the podcast, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, so first thing uh, I want to get into is uh, how did you get started? Like when you first started training, like what sparked your interest? Pretty sure you're an athlete. Right. So uh, so what ended up happening is that uh, I just work in normal jobs and everything like that. I was working out and doing things like that. And honestly... One of the reasons why I started training is my nephew and his buddies, I felt weren't, they weren't getting proper training yeah. from their high school, from their from their team. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna start training these dudes and you know get them right. So I did that and they started becoming better than everybody else on their team. And when was this? Like what uh, year this was, was this? This was in the 90s, I can't it's so <laughs> <laughs> it was in the nineties, early nineties. But uh so what I did, you know, like I said, I, I was just started training those guys, get them right, uh, and then the word just—that's kind of how it grew because the word just started coming out, yeah. and everybody was hearing about it and things like that. So eventually, uh, they were—they were some of the top athletes on the team already, anyway. Mm-hmm. So, but they just—they became better. And what happened was that I eventually just got approached because I started getting approached by other teams and stuff like that, like rival teams of people. <laughs> Uh, yeah. well, who, so who's been training this yeah, yeah, so so they were like, "Look, the head coach came up to me and said, "Hey, how about you coming on board and training my whole team?" Now at that point, I had never trained that many, like 50, wow. 60 kids. That's yeah. So that was something different for me. So I was like, "Wow, okay, I'm gonna have to try to do this." Well, at that time, I had connections to Nebraska, so I ended up talking to, to people from Nebraska, got their whole program. You know, the whole way I feel like Nebraska is like notorious for releasing their programs. Right. Because I always used to see, like, when I was, when I first started coaching, uh, I used to, like, go look up, like, strength and conditioning right, specifically. Right. And then have a whole program. And, and, and it wasn't an issue. I thought, you know, I just asked and I got the whole, I'm talking about the videotapes and everything, wow. the whole videotapes of it. And so I was like, wow. So, and that was like back in the, you know, the black shirt defense days, you know, of them. So I was like, okay. So I implemented that on the high school level. Uh, we then became just about, that team became stronger than anybody around. You know, this is the whole LA area, so we're talking about, we entered into weightlifting so contests. This, this was at Morovia High School. Morovia, okay. And so we entered weightlifting contests and stuff like that, and we were blown away everybody. And at that time, uh, Bishop Amon was one of the top, top teams. Ones, yeah. They couldn't mess with us in the weight room. Wow. You know what I mean? So we, there was nobody that could mess with us in the weight room. So. And that's when I, I knew already, but I knew that was the basis of any sport, anything in strength and conditioning. I knew you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not hitting it right in the weight room exactly. and doing your conditioning, eventually you're going to run into a team that, that is doing that. Out, yeah. That's going to outwork you, and they just exactly. going to bully you and, and outpower you, outstrength you, and everything else. And so it doesn't, eventually it means nothing, even if you have the talent, more talent than they do. Yeah. They're going to wear you down. Yeah. Uh, so that's always been my basis of trying to get athletes, no matter what sport. And that's one thing I decided to do is I didn't want to work specifically on one sport athletes. Mm-hmm. I wanted to work on all athletes because I looked at it like everybody needs strength and conditioning. Exactly. Everyone. So, uh, Cross country runners. Yeah, everyone. everyone. So it didn't matter. So uh, my clientele started growing. I got a hold of a whole basketball team that got them to the semifinals and they played against the Collin Twins that was at, um, they were at Harvard Westlake and they eventually they, went they, to, uh, to uh, Stanford and then they went yeah, to Pro. Okay, yeah, know. those guys. So yeah, we played against them at Doherty High School, who was the team, we went to the semifinals and we didn't lose by much, we actually almost got them. Wow. And so, and, and I was at that time just training dudes in my backyard and yeah. converted my whole backyard into a weight room. Just did strength and conditioning with people, and, and so I, you got it. You started. So like, what? So during the time when you first started, what age were you? Uh, 
I was in my 20s. In your 20s? Yeah. Early 20s. Yeah. Early 20s. And you're from Monrovia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're early, early 20s, yeah. and uh, you started like, I'm about to start training because of that yeah. situation. Yeah, and, and, like, and what I was doing is uh, I was still working. So I was just, yeah. the training was on the side. And, and then uh, once I started becoming like, like part of coaching staff, not just the trainer. I was like yeah. on the coaching staff. Yeah. It started kind of taking a little bit more time, time. for me. I still made time to do it because I actually loved it and enjoyed it. Uh, so, uh, but I, no matter what job I had, I never gave up that part because I yeah. loved it so much. So I kept the training going constantly, no matter what, no matter if it was, uh, you know, what time of the day it was or whatever, I tried to fit it in, you yeah. know, and make it happen for whoever I was training. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, so during that time, man, like we said, when you were young and you started training, how did the, what kind of obstacles did you go through? Like early on, you think, you know? I would say for me, um, it was more so, especially because it wasn't on social media. Yeah. So it was more so of uh, just, you know, word of mouth type of stuff as far as building clientele. Yeah. Uh, so that it kind of came from that, but the one good thing for me, and to be honest with you, I didn't have a whole lot of obstacles, only because uh, I knew a lot of people, and once people understood what I was doing, and how serious I was, and then cool. seeing the results, that was a key thing, and that's what I always banked on. I knew once I give my people results, that's going to speak for sure, itself. Exactly. So no one questioned anything I was doing because they were seeing what my exactly. athletes were doing. And then at one point, I was, and I still am, very, very cocky with what I do. Yeah. I know so, you have some haters, bro. Yeah, so Everybody for got me, haters. I, yeah, and that, that's the thing. I, I have that because this what I did run into is people uh, thinking I'm going to take their clients from them. Yeah. And that's something I've always, I've never, never, never have done. I've, all, I've always been the type of uh, trainer that, I look in like we can all eat, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I have friends, other friends that are trainers that if I think they're a specialty on one certain thing, I'll send my client to them. Like, I have a buddy that does speed training and, and he trains everybody, but his specialty is track. Yeah. So I send my people, like, you want to get fast, this is who you go to. Because yeah. he's so technical with everything, you know what yeah. I mean? So I, and you know so I try to surround myself around those type of tra exactly. other trainers because I always tell them, look, man, the way you become the best trainer is you got to keep an open mind and work with other trainers yeah. and learn from spread the knowledge. It's, it's, it's no end to, to learning and getting the, becoming a better trainer. I right. said, that's the reason why I guarantee my work because I'm always learning every single day. I'm always learning for myself. I'm learning from other trainers, yeah. and I'm open to that. I'm open to learn from another trainer. Yeah. You know that the, you know that even if a trainer hasn't been training as long as me, you know what I mean. You can still learn from people. Yeah. People have different techniques and different ideas yeah. and stuff like that. So I've always been in, in a a group of you know talking to people. At one point, I was a part of a group where all all these trainers from from top trainers to college and pros. And we used to, we actually came out years ago, years ago, with an ebook of all these different drills and everything, yeah. to where people can literally go in there and print out this ebook on all these different drills. We all had to come up with drills, and we had to, and it wasn't just coming up with real. We actually had to show data of what from the beginning to the end what happened and how the the athlete uh, improved on that drill. And so, yeah. and then the one, the person running it had to, he he literally had to. Look it over and decide. Okay, this is good enough to put into this ebook. Yeah. You show the data. You show this athlete from this point wow. to this point. You know what I mean? So I've always surrounded myself around that type of uh, like-minded yeah. people. You know, and but going back to the haters, you know, there's people who get jealous. And my wife always tells me like, this always happens to you because you're so open to people, yeah. and that people get. Uh, intimidated yeah. by your training because you're so confident with your stuff. Yeah. They always think you're going to take their clients. And I'll even sit down and talk yeah. to people like, hey, man, let's get together. Let's do this. We can build on this. Yeah. And then they go, ah, oh, this and that. Yeah. Or, protect them. Right. Yeah. You know, Thanks. and then yeah. I'm always open. I'm, I'm like, I'm never, because I'm so confident on what I do, I, I'm never intimidated by a single yeah. trainer. I've never been around any trainer that's ever intimidated yeah. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, because uh, I'm confident on what I can do. You know, and that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm cocky and I can't, like I, going back to what I was saying, 
I'll learn from somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm open to it. And so I've had people, like even schools, like I'll, I'll even be a part of coach staff where they'll bring me in like, okay, I need you for eight weeks or six weeks or a month, you know, four week sessions. So I've done that for schools. I've been on, like I said, I've been on the coach staff where I'll go in there like, I'll develop like an eight week program for them. Mm -hmm. And, but I've also been a part of people where I set up stuff, literally set it up. And this one high school I was doing stuff for, and they were like, oh, we want you for all this, this, this type of period. Yeah. So I went in there and set stuff up. But the coach didn't know is that the way I train is in sessions, certain sessions. Yeah. So at the beginning for them, they was at level one because they weren't ready for the other stuff. So I, I was easing them into it. Yeah. They stopped at level one and thought that they could take it from there. And I was like, but you don't even know what's coming next. Exactly. Like you just a coach, you don't even understand the training part and the development of what we're trying to do. But I said, oh, you know, it's fine. You know, do whatever you want. So, but it's it's that's the kind of stuff I've had happen where they said they, they want me in the long term, but they get in. Oh, we can just do this ourselves. Yeah, right? exactly. Because you don't know. What it's you're different. Doing. You don't know. You don't know exactly. That's, what you're that's doing. funny because the, there's a uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him. His name is Doctor Bondarchuk, uh, but he's a, I think he's Russian. I believe he's Russian. But um, he's a, a, tra a trainer like you are, but he does like every event, like, uh, but more specifically known for a hammer and track and field. Right. But he has this like theory, not really theories, but uh, practices that he does is so specific to training. Right. Right. Like certain weeks, like, all right, these are, these are the right. week cycles. Right. You're going to go for, he knows exactly when, like, well, people, it depends on your body or whatever, but right. like, you're going to go for 38. Uh, sessions. You go 38 sessions by 38 sessions. You should start peaking. Once you start peaking, peaking, we're gonna switch out these sessions, and then you're gonna break you back down and you come back up again. Exactly. And it's crazy how that works. But people right. think they can go out and do it. Right. But so many people like try to like because he, he doesn't speak English that way. Right. They try to like get his training down yeah. and like. But only certain people is actually doing it. It's yeah. actually a, a guy I know. His name is Nick Garcia. Yeah. He he's the uh, strength. King. Uh, strength and conditioning coach at Notre Dame. Right. That's that is too far. Right. So like I understand what you're saying. Like yeah. when it comes to training, you yeah. know, like specific, and then people go on. And who would you say that um, are some people that you look up to, like when the training wise, that you learned a lot from? Um, man, it's hard. It's hard to actually know. No. To be honest with you, yeah. I, I, I just because uh, not that like oh I can't learn from anybody. It's just. Throughout the years, I've gotten bits and pieces yeah. from so many people. people so, but what, nobody I, what I haven't like, done is like, oh, this is the dude yeah. that I'm going to learn from and, and everything like that. Yeah. So that's the only reason why. I, yeah. uh, so to be honest with you, I probably have learned from every single body, every single person, person. I've come across. Yeah. Maybe a trainer, and picked up stuff from them and things like that. And I, I think one thing is my philosophy is actually because years ago, I've had like a lot of injuries. Yeah. So one thing is I, I was competing in bodybuilding. Yeah. So Ronnie Coleman was a bodybuilder who I would say anybody. You gotta see those pictures, man. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the one dude that, that, <laughs> that influenced me the most, probably for me personally, yeah. was him yeah. because I followed his program, his, his his meal plan, his training, and everything. So I followed that, and that got me like the best results. And, you know, so through that I learned from it. I end up, you know. During a training session, my knee and my back snapped at the same time. That was about maybe 11 years ago, and that's what stopped everything. That's what I had to get knee surgery, back surgeries. I had to, you know, and it just completely came, everything came to a halt where it was been pretty much 10, 11 years of recovery, yeah. you know, from that. Thank God I still had training uh, that I could actually train people and still could train other people even though I was not capable of training myself. Yeah. But um, I would say that, and then it, the funny thing is, probably most person, to be honest with you, that didn't personally know and influence me most is probably Kobe Bryant. Kobe, and Kobe, Kobe has always been a dude that I've always listened to and heard what he said. I didn't realize how much I used him in my training when I'm talking and training yeah. and everything like that until he got killed. Yeah. And then I had people literally calling me and texting me, telling me the stories that I had, and I was that I was telling them about Kobe. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I didn't realize I was even doing it yet. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even realize that he, I, that he was in my life that much. Yeah. What I'm doing, my training, and everything like that. Just his mentality in that moment. I, I probably used the mama mentality about a billion times in my training. Because it's so, it's so, uh, it's so important. Right. You know, your mentality. But one thing I tell my athletes as a coach, and I'm pretty sure you do as a trainer too, it's like the mind controls the body. Right. If you don't got it up here, it ain't right. nothing. That's what, this is why so many athletes fail. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't got it up here. Right. And they got all the talent in the yeah. world. Yeah. But if you don't got it up here, it's right. not going to manifest like yeah. you want it to. And that's the part when, that's how you pull together the full package. Right. You, you, you get them right with the mind, you get the yeah. right mentality, you create the culture, yeah. and then uh, and then you work on the, yeah. the training and staying right. healthy. If you can stay healthy, have the mentality and the work ethic, right. you're you right. going to be and, the player. I always well. try to tell people at one point, like, you know, a lot of my athletes, especially the older ones, I know that they can, they, they're being tested mentally, that I try to, I try to drive into that part. Mm -hmm. I said, because at one point at every athlete, you're going to get to a point where your body says, I'm done. And then it's going to have to come here. Yep. So you already got to come from here anyway. Yeah. But physically, your body is going to say, I'm done. Yeah. And that's when you hear that term of mentally strong. Yeah. I said, then your mental part has to really kick in and say, I got to push through this. I got it because my body's saying I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I wish Big Ben would hear that, man. Yeah. <laughs> right? So. Big Ben need to hear that and yeah. say, I'm done. No, I'm that's done. What, no, I was playing. But yeah, no, I got you. Though, so, you sure. know what I'm saying? So, that's what one of the things that, uh, you know, I always emphasize to my to my clients, too, about being that, 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 mental, that mental toughness yeah. and, and believing it. And I always have uh, a term that I always use. I always tell my athlete, you know, you work to be the best you can be, and you never let anyone outwork you. So those are things you can control. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, there's one thing you can control is how hard you work and how much work you put into it. You can control that. Other stuff you can't control. So at the end of the day, you know, you put everything into it. You can look yourself in the mirror and say, I did everything I could. Exactly. But when you know you didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, you gonna look that, back, like you who are you working for? Like, who are you? Well, why are you even grinding like this? If you're not going to try to, at the end of the day, you're going to give up. You let yourself it. down, you let your team down, and everything. Right. So, you know, you just got to put that into it every single time and, and see where it takes you because that's going to give you the best chance. And that's with everything. And I've always looked at my clients as, you, you know, you're not just my client. I'm not just training you to be a boxer or football player, basketball player, or whatever. I'm trying to. These lessons you gonna learn for life. life yeah. This is gonna help you as a human being in yeah. life. You gonna become a better husband, a better wife, a better sister, brother, husband, you know, Hold uncle, on. aunt, whatever, student, a child. You gonna be a better father or whatever, yeah. whatever is going. You're gonna be because you're gonna endure all these different things. And you have to work hard for it. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, and you got to know how to deal with failure, how to deal when you're actually on top, and how to sustain that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So. What what would you say? Um, what you what would you say is one of the the keys to success when it comes? You working with all these athletes throughout the years. What do you think? Like you know, are some of the like if you can say three things that's most important for athletes to do in order to like you know prosper in athletics? What would you say? Um, well. It's hard to say three things. Three, <laughs> three like, you know, I you don't need, like, you yeah, need. yeah, I understand. Well, if you got to add an extra one, then right, you're right. Good. So one of the things that I got, I, I try to tell, you know, the athlete as far as being, and I'm talking about being the athlete, mm -hmm. you know, if you're just talking about just an athlete. Mm -hmm. So one of the three things, or some of the three things that I concentrate on is the effort you put, put forth. Mm -hmm. So that's one, of, you have to put effort because that's going to take you here. So your effort is everything, keeping your mind right. Mm -hmm. And that's with everything, your mental toughness and everything like that. And then I always try to tell athletes, you got it, whatever you put in your body is fuel. And, it, and that's where it's going to take you, your energy level, your everything. It's like control. Car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I used to, I used to be uh, uh, strict and conditioned to one high school to where they had to fill out something every single day we was in the weight room. Yeah. One of the questions on the weight room was, how to sleep, and what's your mood like. So I made them responsible for like, and when it started happening is they could see like, 
if they didn't have enough sleep, they saw how they performed that next morning in the weight room because they didn't have enough sleep. Yeah. They weren't, that's part of taking care of your body. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, your mood. Oh, you know what I mean? Getting your mind right and going in there with the right attitude and stuff like that. And I, that I'll, send, of, I'll send athletes home. If they ain't ate, they come to practice, they ain't ate right. all day. You know what Don't what try to eat. They come from class or something like you might as well just go home because you know you no know good for me. If you're in no a bad good. mood, hey man, I understand. You know, uh, let me know how it goes. If not, we're trying to get you some right. help. You know, and I mean? they don't understand that the, every everything that they put in their body is it can make or break them. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look, your energy level, everything is is affected in you. So when you got all that, you put all that together, you eating right, you getting your mind right, trying to meditate or whatever it is. And you're doing all this stuff, you will be the best person. Not just the best athlete, but you're gonna be the best, best person, person you can be. So you put those things together. And you know, what I always try to do too is I try to get my kids to uh, not do well, not just kids, but I try to get my clients to uh, also try to volunteer and help out in the community yeah. and do stuff like that. So I try to get them and you know, do all get kinds involved. of stuff, get involved in the community and try to think of outside what they're doing and think for other people and try to help other people. So, I, yeah. what, what would you say? Uh, what stories or could you think of like success stories of athletes you work with that's like notable to you? Like you always like when you bring up, you know, when you talk to other people, you're like it's always that one athlete. Like, hey, I, I brought this one kid. He came in when he was da da da. You know? Yeah. Well, I I have a, actually quite a few like yeah. that. Um, but I would say uh, uh, one athlete that. I got her. She was already an amazing athlete. And the reason why I'm telling you this story about her is because she she did something that was not normal in her life. It was something she wasn't used to or anything. So she was a top basketball player. Yeah. Right? I'm talking about one of the top players in the country. She was a McDonald's All-American, played D1, uh, played overseas, everything. She was an Olympian, mm -hmm. basketball player, everything. She, and I trained her for years, and she came up to me and said, Coach Golar, I want to compete in bodybuilding. Because she heard my stories and everything like that. I said, what? She was like, that's what I want to do. Basketball season is over, this is what I'm going to do in off season. Wow. I said, okay, all right, we'll do it. So the gym that I was a part of, it was uh, a lady that was there that competed also. So call her up. You know, that's the thing, you, you know. That's, that's what it's connections, you know what I mean? You reach out to people that you know can help. She meant something to me. I wasn't gonna be sitting there like, oh, I'll do it all myself. No, I reached out to her. She was a female bodybuilder. I said, we're gonna all both work with her together. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up doing that. Got her right. And that's why it was impressive because it was something she had never, never done. done. It's just like stepping out of the shoes. Like, let's go. Leaving, leaving the professional life and then like, right. all right, let's try a whole nother let's profession. Let's try something yeah. totally different. And we literally had six months. Now, mind you, we had six months to train. The people she was going to, compete, going to be competing with, these people, this was their life. They weren't trained for six months. These yeah. girls have been training their whole life Facts, yeah. for years and years and competing after, you know, one, one after another, one competition after the other. This was her very first one, and she, had, she was trained for six months. Uh, it was the West Coast Classic. So, entered her into West Coast Classic. Man, she competed against, I believe it was 30, 30 something girls. Right, she ended up getting third. Wow. First time she was telling me, man, all these girls in the back, everybody was giving her compliments, could not believe it was her first competition, couldn't believe that she had just started six months ago wow. or anything. So for me, I was so proud of her. I wasn't surprised, but I was proud of her oh, because right. I knew how, what type of person she was. I knew how hard she worked for everything. You know, she wanted to work as hard as possible for everything, you know what I mean? So I knew, even though this was something new for her, I knew she was gonna do well. I didn't, I actually didn't know she was gonna do that well. Yeah. So I was there at the competition. Uh, she did great. And her being the way she was, she was mad that she got third. <laughs> yeah, like you know what I mean? Because she's that competitive, you know what I mean? So I thought like, wow, you know, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was amazing, I said, so I was proud of her. 
you know, I have it on my on my Instagram. Yeah. So she's on there on my Instagram, Instagram when she is her her boyfriend. So how long ago was that? Man, it was recently or no? No, 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 no. This is she, she had four kids. Though. I was about to say she probably got kids. <laughs> she had four kids, married and everything. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I was a picture with she's on my Instagram with her and her then boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, they're they're uh, they're husband and wife now. Yeah. So, but yeah, so she's in there. You That's know. awesome. And you can look her up where she, she, she's famous, actually. So is her husband. So. You might as just say her name. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. uh, it's Nikki Speed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nikki Speed, Cam Jordan on, on the Saints. That's her husband. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, number nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. So, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. That's so, awesome. Geez. Um, I was going to ask you, so what about uh, on the business side of what you've done. So like one of the things that I talk about and, uh, and one of the reasons why I started what I'm doing is that I've seen in my, where I grew up in my community and where I'm from in Bakersfield, um, nobody that I know owns a business right. and especially black people. Right. Right. So we, we only thing that we know for the most part is like where I live as like people either go work in the oil fields when you come out man or you go work at Walmart or yeah. whatever, right? That's where my mom worked at was right. Walmart. And um, but my mindset was different, you right. know. I wanted to achieve more because I never, I didn't want to be poor no more. Yeah. So um, on the business side, right? How, what was your mentality like? How how did you like? I know you started training and probably was something low key, but how did, when did you transform into that business part to where you right. didn't have to like you was able to set up yourself where you could buy a house, take care of your family type. Well, stuff? Well, one of the things I did was, and it's funny because on my injuries is what made me. Uh, literally be I, you know, I'm on disability yeah. so it literally made me like you can't work no more yeah. literally doctors like you're done yeah. you got way I got metals and screws all through my body so they're like you're done you know you can't you know, and this, so was, like, this was after the bodybuilding yeah yeah okay. this was after the surgeries from bodybuilding and everything like that so I was like I'm gonna have to take because I love training so much I'm like I'm gonna turn my life over to this 100% yeah. now so if I can't sit there and get a job, a normal job like I've always had, yeah. I gotta put everything into yeah. this. And it helps you a little bit because you was probably getting like supplemented for disability. Right. And then you right. able to put everything in that, yeah. like I'm gonna make something. Yeah. yeah. So Versus somebody like not having nothing right. and trying to do something. It's, right. hard, it's still a hard sacrifice. Right. Right. And it's probably tough. And, then, and then the thing is that I have like the most super supportive wife you can ever have. Yeah. So that's another thing that why my wife has always supported what I, done with the training because awesome. she's always seen everything she's seen all my clients she's seen the success and what they've had she's heard them say you know them and the parents like man my god you know my child is on this level now or i had a kid that was third string they end up taking a all-american spot in a month and a half wow. from training he took the dude's spot so I've had, you know, I got like a bunch of stories Sorry, like that yeah. where I got dudes who weren't started or they were second string or they had to sit because the dude was a senior and they started training me and it took the spot, you know. And I, and I always tell them, you were just lucky enough that the coach let that happen. Exactly. But sometimes coaches, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? They got their favorites yeah, and stuff exactly. like that. That's so sometimes true. you don't get the opportunity. And so thank God, you know, I've been part of that where like really no denying it these dudes because they were yeah. just that much better. They became that much better than their other you know, teammates. So they had a plan. So, but it would, again, what helped me more than anything is just my wife being supportive okay. and doing everything like that. And uh, so, again, my, my client, yeah, right I was able to take my time, spend the money uh, on equipment and do things like that and, and, and build it and build it. And even how I got this, the crazy thing is I always, I used to train in parks and, and my house and everything like that. Like in my old house, like I said, I had, when I was training dudes, it was like my backyard was like a weight room. It was like a gym, actually. And I used to actually have memberships. People in the neighborhood used to pay memberships to train in my yard. You know, that's how much weight, you know, everything I had. It was like a real gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, but what eventually happened is that even getting to this spot, which just hasn't been that long, yeah. uh, that, you know, guy who found this spot yeah. saw me training. Yeah. It was like, look, man, I constantly see you training people. Every time I drive by, it's a gang of people in your yard, and you're doing all this training. Like, 
I haven't driven by your house yeah. without people being there and you train. I said, yeah, I train all kinds of people. I train prep dudes, I got people, international dudes, I have people who literally in the summer who come and play room and board at my house wow. for training. That's out of state, out from other countries and everything. So that's a normal thing that I do. They literally come and stay with room and board or training. Wow. You know what I mean? And that's this, dope. You know, so this is kind of stuff that happens. So I said, so, uh, so the guy was like, look, man, I'm looking to get this spot, but I'm looking, hey, I'm looking for uh, uh, someone who, uh, to help me out here. I want, I see what you're doing. I want to open, I want to put trainers in this spot. And we'll work out how, you know, we're going to do it and keep, the, you know, sustain this spot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I said, okay, and me, thinking, I'm like, ah, this is not, this is not real. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, he was like, okay. He was like, let me have your number. I said, all right, you know, let me get yours. He was like, oh, you know. So I was thinking, ah, man, okay. That's a blessing, man. You know, and then, like, a month later, he gives me a call. I'm like, hey, I got the spot. You know, one, let, let's go check it out. So we came, and this was nothing in here. It was just, just concrete nothing, yeah. and everything like Didn't that. should be like so, that. So, uh, I don't know, like, uh, when we're on cars or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. but so, gotta set up and now. it's a lot of baseball in here, too, so we train everybody, and this is, like, the baseball part of it, we got a bed case, and everything like that, so, but the cool thing is that we clicked immediately and worked everything out to where we keep it consistent, it's, it blew up immediately yeah. to where um, we had to even turn people down. Yeah, you got so, waiting list. You know what I mean? So, it's, it's that, that's how well it's been, and we try to and even right now, we're trying to expand. Yeah. So we're trying to expand to even more, you know, next door to where we have like three buildings. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to even, you know, expand to that. Uh, one of the things is uh, not just the Vertimax training, but the specialty on that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and hands down, you know, I, I know nobody can mess with yeah. it. Not in this area. So talk so, a little bit about so, the Vertimax training too. So the Vertimax, about 10 years ago, uh, because of me always trying to become a the best trainer I could be. I'm always searching for the next piece of equipment or something yeah, to make my athletes you know, better. Next level, yeah. You know, and that's the whole thing. You're not one of them old school coaches. Right. Like, you know, but I do some old school stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's still some basic stuff that you still got old school stuff exactly. like that. But I'm also the type of trainer I'm always trying to do. I want my athletes to become the best they can be with the best equipment they can. You know what I mean? So I'm always trying to look for what's out there and this and that. That's how I came across the Vernon Man, yeah. searching for stuff, ran across it. And, uh, and at the beginning, the great thing is that I end up hooking up with an AAU travel team that they actually had the Vernon You know what I mean? So I had already been training on it, but I didn't have my own. Yeah. And the guy, I sat and talked with him, and uh, he was like, man, I have two Vernon Maxes. You're perfect for it. Can you train my whole program? I was like, for sure. That's dope. You know what I mean? So I ended up doing that, training the whole program and everything like that. Eventually got my own Vernimaxes and using those. So it, it, it just blew up from there. And the and thing is that I, uh, you know, I've gotten Vernimaxes for other high schools. I've been, I've gone to high schools and stuff like that to where I had to train uh, other Vernimax people on it. You know, their coaches on it and get them better and stuff like that. So uh, that's the cool thing is I've, I've been uh, I've been able to travel a little bit and, and, and go and do some stuff like that. And so what, what are the things you can do on the Vertimax? So the Vertimax is really, the cool thing about the Vertimax and the reason why I fell in love with it is because what you can do on it is here. Like, so it's where your It's about your, your creativity. Right. So, yeah. and that's the thing with me. And, and so I'm so creative with everything I'm doing is that uh, my wife laughs at me because I sleep with a, a pencil and a notepad yeah. on my nightstand because I literally dream about drills. So I'll wake I, up I in the middle of the night yeah. and I'll write down a drill that I dr had a dream about. Yeah. And then I'll come in and then we'll try it out. I, uh, those I normally try on, on like my best clients because yeah. some of them are super difficult. Yeah. Some of them don't even make sense. When I get, there, get here, I start working on them like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> it was here in fourth grade in my dream in my mind, but now I put it down here. It's not, you know, we're going to, or I'll say, okay, let me tweak it a little bit. And so it's funny because my clients always have it's a joke that, you know, I come in and they're like, Coach, you had any dreams? You know, it's funny. You know, they'll, they'll laugh at me, ask me if I had any dreams. Like, yep, get ready. Yeah, get ready. You know, or I'll, I'll have a day to where I'm literally have.
clients to where like this is gonna be testing. I got some new drills that we're gonna test stuff out and see if it's um, we're capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Is this even possible? Or is this just way, way too difficult for any human being to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. So, so that's uh, so the thing is with the Vertimax, like I said, it's it's you know wherever your creativity is, you can do a million different things. Mm -hmm. It's for every single sport there is. For everything I've had, gymnasts, I've had ballet dancers, boxers, basketball, football, soccer, volleyball, uh, swimmers, uh, 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 water polo, like everything, even karate. I've had everything, everything you can think of, you know, baseball, everything. So it's always, and I'm, I'm always eager to try to learn more stuff. So if I get a, a say, a client from a sport I have never used for. I, I never worked with, you know, that's, that always gets me excited as soon as that, you know, hey, can you, you know, I'll never turn it down, yeah. you know what I mean? So if somebody says, oh, even if I've never trained that particular sport, I know I, because long as I've been training, training yeah, yeah. yeah, so you're doing you're training conditioning better. no matter what, and then we'll get sports specific with it, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'll do my research because that's what I always do. Right. So if it's like a sport that I don't, I have never played in my life, I'll do the research on it. Mm -hmm. With the strength and conditioning, all the stuff, and I'll implement that on the Vernimax. Yeah. And I'll put it to work, and that has never failed me. Yeah. Never. It's never failed me. It doesn't matter. I've never played the sport. I know what to do, and I've done this for so long. And you can tell, like, I put it together. With certain sports, like the movements and stuff, like the movement patterns, like, oh, this is right. what they do with that? Right. Okay, they don't need a strong forward. Right. They're going to need this. Right. They're going to need that. Right. And then I'm real specific with technique. So even if it's a sport I have more, I'll look up the proper technique for something. Yeah. So you don't allow them to be doing it. Right. So I don't, I don't like to be tedious with it, right? You know, just like today, I had a client I was training with that's still having problems with his hips and everything he has, doesn't have that much mobility. So most of my clients, not most, all of my clients, I always work in hips. So I work in ankle strength and mobility and hip strength and mobility. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the hip flexors, the adductors, the abductors, and trying to get them right because I tell them, along with their core. So I'm like, those things hinder a lot of athletes because most athletes don't work on their, their ankles, don't work on their hip mobility right. and strength or their core. They'll do it some down. You'll get them to maybe work you on their tell core. Them. That's how they get hurt. Right. Like all these different injuries come right. from instability right. of certain muscles. Right. right. And no matter what, no matter what sport, you need all of those. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at like, it, it's the basics. These are things that you... And uh, most athletes that come to me, no matter who they've been training with or whatever, I already know. Like, this is what you need. I know, and they're like, man, I've never done this before. I know. Mm -hmm. I know because I know most trainers and most people don't work with it. And I'm real tedious with it. Mm -hmm. So, or I'll have somebody say, oh, yeah. You know, I always ask them, have you ever trained on the vertebrae? And they're like, yeah, once or twice. Or they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, but you haven't worked trained with me. <laughs> and that's the difference. So, literally, all this time, I've had people who, train on the vertex, even the people who have done it many times yeah. come to me and says, I have never, never those drills. done these type of things. Yeah. I've never worked this hard on the vertex. I said, unfortunately, you got people who do very, very basic stuff and they're not expanding their mind with the drills. And they're doing very, very basic stuff on the vertex, you know, and that's why even me being connected to the vertex and their website and everything like that, I'm constantly learning you know, during the summit, like the last summit we were a part of, um, it's a, it's a guy, it was, uh, I think they were at Kentucky, and he had this new drill he was doing. I was excited. Again, you know, for me, I, I don't ever, like, if I get a drill from somebody, I'm, like, sending them props. Or I see somebody doing a drill on Instagram, I'm like, man, that's nice. I'm going to implement that, in, yeah. and I'll tag it. I'm like, like I'm, not, I'm not tripping off of, oh, this is my drill. I yeah, there's so many people. I'm like okay that. with that. I'm all right. I'm, you gonna have to. I'm just about to work it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just it. like, that's a great drill. If I feel my athlete's going to work well with it, I'm not, I'm not attached to thinking it has to come from me like I am the one that had to come up to drill. No, this dude did a great drill. I love it. Now I might put a little twist on it or it might be the exact same drill. But I'll do it and post it. I'll tag them so they know. They're like, hey, man. And I'll tell them, hey, man, that's a, I'll literally tell them, that's a great drill. I'm doing the next session with my athletes. <laughs> I'm doing the next session. You know what I mean? And I'll do it and tag them. I'll do the same thing with Vertimax. Like when they did the summit, they did this one drill, I fell in love with it, and the next day I did it, and then they sent it out to like, man, this dude was really paying attention. So I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to make my athletes the best. 
like second to none. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you know, I've always told people, I said, I, I'm so confident with my stuff is that I don't, I'll match my athletes against anybody, right. anybody. And it wouldn't be as funny because I've always wanted to start like a reality show. Because I was like, if you get training, yeah. and they all get them, you get the same athlete, same height, same no, weight, be dope. same everything, people, and then man. you compete, and the winner, say, uh, you go to pros or college, the winner is, you know, whatever college needs a strength and conditioning do, that's your spot. Yeah. You won the spot, you know, and that's like, yeah. that's the, that's the, your winnings. Or oh, you want to do like a trainer one. Right, a trainer one. Don't you really like with the athletes, because the athletes would be dope too. Yeah, no, no I'm saying. High school, no, well, 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 yeah, but I was just saying, but you still yeah. have, you, you still have those athletes, they're all, all identical, high weight, everything, so yeah. everything is it's an even playing field. You're not having some dude that's 6'3", and one dude's 5'9", or whatever. I'm talking about trying to get identical athletes. Yeah. And then that's when you see, you know, as far as the trainer. Yeah. Who was putting in the work? Who was doing what? They might and be and that So you yeah. do all, you do the 40, you do the vertical, you do everything at the beginning. Testing, yeah. All the testing, and then however long you do it, at the end, you know, what you formula see, working. Yeah, you see who did the best. Cool. You know what I mean? So that's, uh, you know, again, for me, I've always told myself, I'll, I'll match my athlete. You give me an athlete, and you give me everything. Like, I'm, I'll do everything. Like, I got the meal plan, I'm doing like every part yeah. of their training. Yeah. And I'll match my athlete. It's not just them like, showing up. Yeah. It's like holistic. Yeah, yeah the whole, everything. everything. Like, you give me an athlete like that, I'll match that athlete to any other body, to anyone. I don't really care. Yeah. You know, I know mine's going to be up there. So what, what, uh, what, after all these years of training, what still drives you to continue to work with athletes? I, I think just it's something, because I, I love it. And I've always, yeah. I've always, you know, when... You, know, you hear that saying, it's like, if you do something you love, it's not really work. Yeah. And you don't feel like you're going to work. It's like, that's how it feels. You know what I mean? And then, when, you know, this is one thing that, that, that I can be down one day or be in pain. Because I'm still dealing with pain yeah. for my surgeries and stuff. So there's times where, man, I can't hardly walk sometimes and stuff like that. Where I'll come in to train and it's like somebody just... I just stepped into the fountain of you. Yeah, it's, like it's, it's like the energy. It's instant. Like as soon as I start training, it just all goes away. Yeah. It's like it's 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 the trippiest thing in the world. And I always tell my athletes, like you don't understand what it does when I'm coming in and training, especially like the young I know exactly what you say. It's a great thing. I do like a Vernimax class where I do a group of kids that's between eight to ten kids. You know what I mean? That they come in here. And every time, I, single time I come in here, these kids are just. A lot of energy, they ain't always in a good mood, they always put me in a good mood. You know, they just there, man. You know, they're so raw because they just, they're there to work hard, they don't complain. Even when they like, coach, I'm getting a little dizzy, I'm about to throw up. All right, go throw up. Yeah. You know, just come back when, you know, when you're ready. <laughs> you know, but it's like, they, it, the great thing about them is that they, they go do that, and but they're not sitting there saying, I don't want to train with them. Yeah, they still come back with You know what I mean? Even the ones that, hey, they might go through up and everything like that, but even the ones that are doing that, I always refer back to, what would you do today? What you eat today? Yeah. Are you hydrated? Yeah, so, so I try to connect that yeah. so they understand why you're feeling like this. Yeah. Now, some days, it's just a bad day. Some days, it's a real hard training day, and it's just a, you know, but most of the time, you can backtrack, and your performance is because of what you did, what you did that day. What you put in your body, if you hydrated, all that stuff. So I'm trying to make these kids connect those two, yeah. you know, even at a young age. You know what I mean? Because yeah. when I was competing, everything I put in my mouth, I knew. It, it is the weirdest thing. It was like a, a, it was like every piece of food I put in my mouth. I, I feel, felt you could feel the difference. difference. I knew what I was putting. In, I was putting in my mouth. I <laughs> knew what it was doing for me. I knew the results I was getting from it, and. It's hard for me to understand why people don't get that and see. And I, I think like when you're younger, you don't really, because I didn't really notice. I used to just be working out. Yeah. But now, like, I'm not getting that much older. But now that I'm, like, bigger than what I used to be, yeah. and now that I'm working out and eating better, like, you can totally tell the difference. Like, yeah. you know, like with bloating, you know, energy, like, everything that you do. Yeah. And then when I do eat better, like, if I go eat Jack and Box right yeah. now, I'm going to feel like shit right yeah. afterwards, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. like, I, you could tell, but when you're younger, you just be getting yeah. kids be eating takis right. and Gatorade and they come in here. And stuff, so you try to get them, you know, to switch and everything like that. And 
you know, and do it. But I, you know, for me, I always try to tell my clients too, like, look, one thing is your grind got to be right. So you got to think, okay. And I always, all my clients, there's 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Don't ever forget that. Yeah. So at some point, when you sit there and you try to tell me that you want to get to this level, I want you to always remember there's 24, 24 hours, hours in a day. day. So, so when you come up with excuses that you can't train, that you can't do nothing, you better believe when you're doing that, the person that's going to take your spot is not giving up that day. I said, you're not just competing against you. And I always tell my clients this. You're competing against everybody in the country at your age and your position. Do you understand exactly. that? You in high school, if you're trying to get- It's not just your high school, man. It's not just your high school. You yeah. want everybody in the country. Do you understand that? So when you sit there thinking, I just don't feel like training today. Somebody else working. Somebody else is working. And it's going to take your spot. Stop. Take your scholarship. Yeah, take, take everything, everything from, you. from you. That's what you're competing against. You're competing against, I said, you international, you basketball dude, it's international, sure. bro. It ain't just- You're going, against the, you're going against the world in exactly. basketball. You got international players. So I said, so that's what you're going against. So you can't think like, oh, this. I said, look, when I was competing, I was working at the same time when I was competing. Yeah. I said, I was a grown man, married with children when I was competing in bodybuilding. I was getting up at 2.30 in the morning and train, go to work at 4 in the morning and work 12 to 16 hours and do the same thing every single day. I said, so I'm the wrong person to talk to about having some Not excuses. excuses right? About, you know what I'm saying? I said, so think about that. Married and having children, having to take care of children, yeah. having to work 12 to 14 hour a day, plus training. I said, that's what I was doing. Because I knew at 2.30 was the only time I had time to train. And I had to go to work at four. So I said, so, you know, and so I always, you know, and, and I would say probably 99% of my, my clients understand. It. Yeah. And they get it. You know, they were like, okay, coach. I said, you know, I'm willing to train anytime. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So if you tell me, hey, coach, I can't get in until I only time I got out at four in the morning. Let's go. I'm not going to say no to you. You're showing some dedication. Who am I? Why am I going to say no to you? When you're my client, you're yeah. willing to train at four in the morning. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you no. Let's get this I'm right. happy that you want to do that because I'm seeing that grind. Yeah. Exactly. You know I'm gonna give you what you're giving to me. Right. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you're saying because, like, when I, I have that, I still have that mentality, but I, I start to see it happen when I first started coaching when I was doing grad, grad assistant in Arkansas, and, it, and to this day when I talk to my old athletes, yeah. they thought I was hard on them, but I'm like, I'm not, my coach was harder on me, but to me, it's because I want y'all to. Grind, I want you to want it. Yeah. Every single one of those athletes graduated got their degree. Yeah. Every single one of those athletes exceeded their expectations. Yeah. And if you stay consistent, you work hard, you grind hard, yeah. and you really want it, and you understand the culture and what you and what your coach is trying to do, yeah. um, then you always gonna be successful. And, 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 and if you think about anybody that's uh, that that's that's at the top level, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, I don't know Patrick Mahomes, yeah. whoever, all those players have one thing in common: they all have a coach behind them. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's why if you can stay consistent, do that, they all yeah. grind, you know? Yeah, and then the thing about you saying about like them graduating and stuff like that's another thing that I work with mm -hmm. with my kids. Yeah. You know, they know, like literally I have parents who come up to me and say, hey, they're messing up, uh, you know, they're messing up in school. Okay, and you're done. What coach? Well, yeah, you're not training with me. That's what happened to me. I you wanna act up? You wanna act up and not, not do your homework? You won't train with me. Done. Oh, well, coach, I said, then get your homework together. Get your grades up. Yep. You know what I mean? That's all a part of it. It's all a part of it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I used to even, uh, this was about maybe 15 years ago or so, I used to do, uh, well, not just me, it was me, my sister, my nieces, and we used to do, it was at my house, we used to do this thing we called a oneness class. And we used to do it for the neighborhood. And we would open up the neighborhood and teach these kids just like life lessons. And yeah. just how to deal with like racism and, right. and, and conflict with people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then after that, we would literally, literally, yeah, we would literally go to my sister's house and we would feed everybody. They, the kids, the parents, we'd feed everybody. And we would call it the oneness class. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, and that ended up getting videotaped and sent. Like, that videotape literally got sent to all different states all over the place as this example 
you know, what you what can do the, with, yeah. in different communities. So everybody in, in all these different states started doing it. People started doing it in their neighborhoods. So we start seeing copies. They end up making a, a, a CD of all these different communities doing the same thing. Like, this is what we did yeah, in our community. Yeah, so helping our together. community, keeping together all these different races of people and everything like that, trying to communicate and, and break down barriers, you yeah. know, and things like that. So, you know, that was always, a, that was a cool thing, you know, and so, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, cool. Well, we will wrap it up, man. I appreciate it, man. Right. I'm pretty sure, man, this is all kind of powerful stuff in there. I hope you guys get a lot from this um, uh, and understand, you know, like we talked about, you stay consistent, you work hard, make no excuses. You can achieve whatever you want to. You can break your chains. If you think, even if your, your mom's dad didn't do anything, uh, that don't mean you don't have to be nothing. You know, that don't mean you don't have to get what you got, what you want. You know what I mean? And keep grinding. But yeah, keep up the work. Yeah, man. I'm here, that. man. Yeah. Training. Anybody want to get that grinding?